Fingers have a special sign I happen to discover They have three fingers in the air And flash it to each other They send their greetings to you They sing them and they shout But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out But if you meet a fixie Please don't let their secret out the Chain Reaction. Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Uh -huh. Ugh. Whoa! Ah! Ugh! Oh! Hey, Tom Thomas, can you hear me? Tom Thomas, let me out! Mm. 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 No, look, is that you banging? Yeah, and how did you end up in there? None of your business. Why are you so rude to me? Because I feel like it. Oh, yeah? Enjoy sitting there. Well, who needs you? Goodbye. <laughs> oh, Simka, what happened to you? Did you bang yourself? And so what? Does it hurt? Leave me alone, Tula. You always have to be fussing over everybody. Come on, why are you so angry, huh? Nolik was rude to me. That means you have to be rude to me? Forgive me, Tula. And where's Nolik right now? There. Let's go see him. Nolik, it's Tula. Are you all right? I'm fine. Why were you so rude with your sister? Because Tom Thomas was rude with me. I get it. It's a chain reaction. A what? <laughs> Setting a log on fire isn't easy. But it's easy to light a match, use the match to light kindling, the kindling to light a twig, and the twig to light the log. Have you ever seen a fire grow? It's an example of a typical chain reaction. So be extra careful with fire. Because just one match or little piece of smoldering coal can lead to a huge disaster. Yes, they can make a whole forest burst into flame and burn down to the ground. And all because of a simple chain reaction. I don't get you. What chain reaction? What do you mean, Nolik? Tom Thomas was rude to you, then you were rude to Simka, then Simka was rude with me. So there it is, a chain reaction. Yeah, and the rudeness was like a little spark. It just spread and spread and spread like a forest fire. Will you forgive me, Simka? Yeah, all right. I've got an idea. Why don't we try starting our very own chain reaction the other way around? What do you mean? Well, instead of spreading angry and rude feelings, we could spread happiness. But how? It's simple. All we need to do is smile and say nice things to each other. What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood. And I know how. Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity and hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring him in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? 
No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. Can you believe that pixies are such itty-bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. Now, here he is, our death-defying acrobat. Nolik, don't! I'm not Nolik, I'm an acrobat. You're going to fall. I'm not going to. Mm-hmm, I see. Every single time with him, it's the same old story. He gets himself into trouble, and I've got to get him out of it. No, no, no! I'm falling! Whoa! <gasps> Hold on! I'm just joking. No, like you're a knucklehead. Simka, uh, 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 Tula, we're down here. <laughs> Look who's in trouble this time, huh? This isn't funny at all. Uh, Need some help? We can manage this ourselves, right, Tula? Well, all right then. See you later. We gotta get out of here. <gasps> Tom Thomas's mom is coming. Hide! Nolik, are you up for a ride? Because this train's leaving the station. Nice place. It's the oven. It's beautiful in here. And not hot at all. Splendid. It isn't hot right now, because it only started warming up. An oven is a cabinet with a heater. It can get so hot inside that it'll roast whatever's in there. As a matter of fact, that's what ovens are for. People roast meat inside of them and bake things, too. Some ovens burn gas for heat and others use electricity. They have special electric coils that get red hot and heat everything that's inside the oven. So be careful around ovens. A hot oven can burn you very badly. It really is getting so hot. We gotta get out of this oven right away! Simka, we're about to get roasted in here. Yeah, inside of a fresh baked fixie cake. I don't want to. You think I do? You'll fall off. Ugh, you're just like Simka. She told me the same thing, and then she was the one who fell. Right into the batter. Together with Tula. <laughs> what? They both fell in the dough? Oh, yeah. And they're probably still stuck in there, too. Tom Thomas, the cake's fresh out of the oven. You want to try some? <gasps> Where could they be, huh? I don't know. Maybe they're inside the cake. They could have turned into screws. We gotta find them. Hey, what are you doing? Eat. Stop playing. Hey, watch out. You could break your teeth. 
The first ovens in ancient homes were nothing more than simple fire pits, where people cooked on hot coals. Later on, the stove was invented. Every house had a stove made out of stone, clay, or cast iron. People would burn wood or coal in them. These stoves produced enough heat to make soup or bake a cake. And then in the 19th century, the gas stove was invented. Gas stoves are much more practical than wood-burning stoves. One second and the gas is burning. A few more minutes and the water's boiling. They're very convenient, but they can also be dangerous because if the pipes aren't in good condition, there can be an explosion. Today, there are also stoves and ovens that run with electricity. They use electric heating elements for frying, boiling, or baking foods without fire at all. Tom Thomas, I think you'll explode. Ow. But it's so incredibly good. I just can't stop eating it. Hmm. Keep chewing, Tom Thomas. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's as much as I can chew. Hey, what are you guys up to? Hey. Uh, up to? We're trying to save you. You're not in the cake? Then how come I was eating all of this? I hate cake. Hmm, uh, maybe it's because that's what good friends do. Yeah, he's a good friend who's got a really good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The elevator. is going to see the circus. Uh, and what? We want to go with them, can we? The answer is no. Just you kids without supervision. Who said no supervision? His parents are taking him there. Well, be careful. Don't worry. They won't even notice us. Hmm. Well, if Tom Thomas's parents will be there... Hooray! We can go! Wait a second. I didn't even say yes yet. Yeah. Simkanolik, where are you? We gotta hurry up. Tom Thomas, it's time to go. I'll be right there. We're ready. Climb into my hood. Ha! Huh, I know who's going to the circus today. Whoa! Huh? What just happened? I think that the elevator broke down. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. Emergency operator. <clears throat> um, uh, we got stuck in the elevator. Understood. Please wait. We'll have the elevator fixed within the hour. That long? That means we won't get to the circus on time. Tom Thomas, we'll go get Papus and Masia. I'm sure they can fix it. People need elevators to help them get to the upper floors of tall buildings. When someone steps into an elevator and presses a button, the elevator's electrical engine starts up. It pulls the cable that is attached to the elevator cabin, and the elevator goes to the desired floor. The cable hangs over a wheel, and it usually has a heavy counterbalancing weight attached to the other end of it. This counterweight balances the elevator and helps the electric motor do its job. Hmm, I wonder what the reason is. I think I see something over there that got stuck. Looks like you found the reason. We gotta go and fix it now or we'll never get to the circus on time. You know, we can just have it right here. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Fixie Spectacular. And now your attention, please, on the high wire. Close my eyes and I won't look anywhere at all. Ow! 
our very own aerial gymnasts. Our next act, feats of strength. It won't come out. <sighs> I know how to fix it. With a death-defying circus act, point your eyes up. Marcia, where are you going? Up to the electric motor. Do you know the right way to behave yourself inside of an elevator? First of all, Small children should never get into an elevator by themselves. They should only go in with their parents or other adults they know well. When getting on to an elevator, the adult should always enter first and then the child. When it's time to get out, it's the other way around. First the child leaves and then the adult. If you are taking a dog onto an elevator, make sure its tail and leash are completely inside so they don't get stuck in the door. And there's one more thing. If the elevator suddenly stops for some unknown reason, don't try to break out of it yourself. Press the button that calls the emergency operator and wait for help from the elevator repairmen. Or the fixies. I reached the motor! Turn it on! Oh, they fixed it. That was quick. Now we'll make it on time. There was no need to worry. Stop! Ugh. It's way too high! Tom Thomas went to the circus without us. There's no need to get that upset, Nolik. Our circus is as good as theirs. Right, Papus? Of course it is! Thank you! Thank you, uh, to who? What do you mean, who? The elevator repairman. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The thermos. Where should I put it? Put what, Tom Thomas? Oh, it's you. Uh, my ice cream. Are you joking? Eat it! I can't. Tom Thomas, are you all right? <laughs> I'm fine. It's just that it's a present for my mom. Today is Mother's Day. Then you need to go give it to her. I can't. Dad and I are going to congratulate her together. What's your dad going to give her? I don't know. But when he gets back home, the ice cream will have melted. Then put it in the freezer. And what if Mom looks in there and finds it? The surprise will be ruined. <sighs> so where won't she find it? I'll tell you where. Inside of your dad's office. I don't see any place to hide it here. There's no freezer or anything. Why don't you take a look inside the box? Here's a thermos, but what good is it to me? Thermoses are for keeping things hot. The ice cream will melt in there. It will not. A thermos is made by putting one bottle inside of another. Between the bottles is an empty space, and that's the secret of a thermos. That space stops heat from getting out or in. So if there's hot tea inside, the empty space doesn't let the heat from the tea get out. And if there's ice cream in the thermos, the space stops the heat that's outside from getting in. And that's how a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. That's it. I'll go and play for a little while. He didn't even say thank you, did he, Nolik? Where are you, Nolik? I'm here! Where? In the thermos! What are you doing in there? I wanted to see that vacuum you talked about. 
Just don't touch anything. And don't even think of licking the foil. The ice cream's so cold, your tongue will stick to the metal. It's already stuck. What did you say? It's already stuck. Already stuck? Uh-huh. Try to unstick it. Well, is it working? Yeah. And what if you breathe onto the foil? <sighs> I'll go and get Tom Thomas. <sighs> Winter is a wonderful time of year. Holidays, presents, snowballs, skates, sleds. But the cold is also something serious that you shouldn't fool around with. The most important thing is to dress warmly. Cover your head with a hat and your throat with a scarf. Then there's less chance you'll catch a cold or get a sore throat. And to keep your hands from getting chapped, don't forget to wear gloves. And never walk around in wet shoes in the winter. That's a sure way to get yourself sick. And there's one more thing I want to tell you. It's great to have fun in the cold, but use your head. Don't eat snow or stick your tongue on metal fences, poles, or doorknobs. Your tongue can get stuck so strongly to the metal that it will be very hard to get off. I wish you all a glorious winter. Where? In the thermos. Hurry, I'll explain everything later. Dad, you're already home? Mm-hmm. Dad, why are you taking my present? What do you mean, your present? I mean this one. Since when did it become yours? Oh, hi there. What's the fuss all about? Oh, it's nothing at all. I uh, have a huh? surprise for you. I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. A thermos? How wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is there something in here? I don't think so. <laughs> Inside, there's a present from me. Vanilla ice cream. My favorite. And how did that end up in there? <laughs> Thank you so much, my sweeties. Nolik, you got me so scared. Thank goodness you thought of turning into a screw inside of there. Uh-huh. Does your tongue hurt? Uh-huh. Do you think you can talk again? I can talk. Oh, that's good. We better hurry. We still need to go and wish our mother a happy Mother's Day. And you should, too. Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The electric train. Suddenly, the Earth is attacked by an alien spaceship. If help arrives here on time, we'll be saved. Move faster, faster. Come on, get off the train. Move it, move it. Tom Thomas, we came here to play. Oh, finally you're here. I need some aliens for this game. What kind of aliens are you talking about? Just plain old aliens. You know the ones. They come destroy the Earth and just about everything. We don't want to destroy anything at all. Why can't we be uh, the train engineers, huh? Train engineers? <laughs> you don't know anything about driving a train. Oh, we know plenty about trains. Humans invented the railroad long ago. But back then, the rails were made out of wood. People didn't start making metal rails until the end of the 18th century. But the first railroad cars had no engines to give them their power. Instead, they used horses to pull them along. 
Later, horses were replaced by the steam engine. Wood and coal would burn in their furnaces to boil the water in the boilers, making the steam that turned their wheels. And the Fixies were there to help those trains go, making sure all of the parts could work together smoothly. But now steam engines have long gone away. The railroad uses electricity now for its power. These electric trains race along the railway at almost the speed of an airplane. So you might know trains, but you'll still be the aliens. This railroad is mine. So you're gonna play the way I want. The train is unloaded and leaving the station. You can play choo-choo by yourself. And I will. Hmm. Hey, why did you stop? This doesn't help either. It's not going at all. Simka! No lick. Where are you? Did I hurt your feelings or something? Mom, is Dad gonna be home soon? No, is something the matter? We've been attacked by evil aliens. The train has to be fixed right away, or we'll never escape them. Ah, uh, mm-hmm. You want some tea? Ah, I've got to think of something. Simka, Nolik, I know you're in there. Please forgive me if I hurt your feelings. I'm really sorry. There's nobody but you that can save the world from the evil aliens. All right, it talked us back into it. Well, let's go and check the rails. Nolik, follow me. I'm faster. Whoa! Well, so much for being faster. But it looks like I found the brake. Tom Thomas, the rails are broken. I know, and so? You know, but that's why your train's not running. Just like a real train, model trains run on electricity. But there aren't any batteries inside the locomotive to pull the other cars. The engine gets its electricity from the rails. Each piece of the rail has a wire in it. If the rails come apart, the electricity can't flow through the track and get to the train. And without electricity, the train's engine just stops going. So reconnect the rails and your train will run again. Uh-huh. Put them together. Ah. Yes. Hooray! The train's running. Way to go. So will you play with me now? And which way are we playing this time? Whatever you want, I'm with you. The train rushes down the track with Nola as its engineer. When suddenly from out of the sky comes an alien spaceship. Greetings to you, O oh people of planet Earth. I come from far away, from another galaxy. Have you come to destroy everything? No, I've come to fix it all. Oh! Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The tools. Hang on, there are these really cool things that I want to show you. Ah. Whoa! Whoa, whoa. <laughs> look how many things you got all at once! <laughs> Your dad's gonna be so angry when he sees what you did with all of his tools. I'm gonna put them all right back where they were. And where were they? Open the box and you'll see. It's neat. There's a special place in there for each one of the tools. Try hammering in a nail or drilling a hole with your bare hands. 
Uh-huh. There's no way. But with the help of the proper tools, it's a piece of cake. But of course, that's only if you know how to use them. Tools need proper care. If the head of a hammer is loose or a drill is dull, then you shouldn't work with them. It's dangerous. And when you're done working, put the tools back in their places. Or you'll be tearing your house apart trying to find them the next time you need them. Huh. The pincers go here, and the wrench goes over there. This drill bit's too long for this spot. Let's see if it fits in this one. Huh. Any idea what this tool is for? For splitting wood or carving stone that chisels what you want to own. <laughs> wow, Simka! You're a real poet. <laughs> Now try to answer this little poem. When you have a thing to measure, this round tool is quite a treasure. This tool, right? I know what it's called. It's a measuring tape. Let me measure you, Nolik. Wow, you've grown. You've almost reached one centimeter. Class! I also have a rhyming riddle for you. What bangs a nail into the wall to make sure pictures never fall? A, a hammer. hammer! I was first, and the hammer goes right here. And now I have one for you to guess. If you need to screw in screws, here's the tool that you should use. A screwdriver! I was first, again. You got it right. All right, Tom Thomas, we'd better hurry. We still have a lot of tools here to get sorted out. Humans, just like Fixies, use hundreds of different tools to do their work. Picking the right one depends on the task at hand. For instance, if you need to hammer in a nail, use a hammer. But you don't use a hammer for a screw. For that, there is a special tool called a screwdriver. A wrench is the tool for tightening nuts and bolts. A vise is used to hold a part in place. And a drill to drill a hole. If you need to cut a piece of wood, you should choose a saw. You could use a handsaw, for example, or a hacksaw. Different kinds of pliers can be used for snipping, gripping, or bending. If you need to smooth something down, you use a file. If you learn how to work with tools properly, you can build just about anything. <sighs> Looks like we did it. Just in time. Oh, and how about this? Do you know what kind of tool that is? I don't know. There's no place for it in here. Just throw it out. Come on, and what if my parents use it? Looks like we did something wrong here. <gasps> my dad came home. Tom Thomas! I'm in here. Hi there. Reading. Way to go, son. Huh? Oh, oh. I don't get it. Where is it? What? I put a piece of metal under the table leg so it wouldn't shake, but it disappeared. So that's where the tool's place is. <laughs> did you take it? What? I didn't. It must be somewhere under the table. And you look under the sofa. Uh, all right. What do you think he wants? He wants us to get that metal thing out of his dad's box. Come on, let's go. You got it. Any luck? Uh-uh. Ah, uh, me neither. I found it, Dad. It was under the table, just like I told you. Huh, you were right. It's strange, how could I have missed it? Maybe you're just, uh, tired from working too much. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Did he... <clears throat> what? Uh, it's a new word, Tadish. Tadish? Hmm. I do like the sound of it. I almost caught one yesterday. A chicken, chicken body, body fled. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, It's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Secret out. 
the Fixie Phone. Tom Thomas. Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. Uh, a race car. No, not that. Chocolate. Uh, a pair of socks. Ha! <laughs> Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! Ah, you got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papus. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. Nolik, don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. See that? So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixies' favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as fixie phones. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super! Oh, it'd be great to have my own fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. Uh, he gets so upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. <laughs> It's a surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papus is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the fixies' numbers from it. 
But how can I call you up then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The instructions. doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah, instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! <laughs> instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got your new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like, I haven't seen a chair? Well, Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without them. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look. We need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is. You gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. No, look, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Whew. 
Ah, uh, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have... Uh, must have... What? Must have what? Look. Here it is. Ah. Ah. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas, it says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be a dummy, instructions are for you. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They hold three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let The Shadow Play. Oh, hi there, Tom Thomas. What are you doing here? Uh, I dropped a paper clip. Give me some light. <laughs> huh. What's so funny, huh? We're trying to help you out. <laughs> You've got funny shadows, that's what. Hey, check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's an eagle. <laughs> and Simka is a goose. <laughs> she looks more like a moose. I do, huh? <laughs> All right, and take that. <laughs> oh. You're like real actors performing in a show. Uh-huh. Actors play in a theater, you know. And we're just under a bed. And so what? <gasps> How about we make our very own theater? A theater with shadows. Glass! Tom Thomas. We need a, a piece of paper, a huge sheet. It's really quite easy to make your own shadow theater. You can make the screen out of a white sheet or a big piece of paper. Next, make sure the room is dark and shine a desk lamp at the screen. Now, to make the shadows, just put yourself or a cardboard cutout between the lamp and the screen. Your shadow or the shadow of your puppets will come to life. But make sure that the audience sits on the other side of the screen. The play will be much more magical for them from that side. Tom Thomas, light! Oh, wow! Simka, you look totally like the real Red Riding Hood. Hello, dear granddaughter. Hello, dear grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. <laughs> no, like, come on, we're rehearsing. <laughs> the wolf's voice is funny. Grandmother, I never noticed what very big teeth you've got. They're so much better to eat you with, my dear. Yum, 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 yum. Let them out, wolf. Or I'll, or I'll get them out, whoa, myself. Ha <laughs> ha. You'll stop me with that little stick? Hey, that's not in the fairy tale. But in the fairy tale, it's a normal hunter. And what do you think I am? Look for yourself. You're way too small to be the hunter. Fine, then go to your play without me. Well, I guess I'll have to make the hunter out of paper then. That's all. Take a break. I'm really thirsty. She was so salty, that grandma. No, Lick, don't be upset. The wolf is huge, and I'm so little. Then let's make you bigger. You see? Now you're bigger. Yeah, you're right. And if we go back here, then I'm even bigger. Now you know. If you go back here near the lamp, your shadow will get bigger on the screen. Class! There are just so many different kinds of theaters in the world. In the dramatic theater, the actors speak the lines of the playwright. At the opera, the actors don't speak their lines. They sing them, accompanied by an orchestra. 
And here at the ballet, the performers don't speak or sing their parts. Here, the story is told with dance. There are also theaters where the performers are animals. In an animal theater, you can watch performances by cats and dogs, or goats and pigeons, or even bears and seals. There are also theaters where the stories are told by puppets. To tell the truth, the puppets are brought to life with the help of people. Yes, there are so many different kinds of theater. My favorite is the Shadow Theater. I think it's the most beautiful and mysterious theater of them all. Hello, dear Grandmother. Grandmother, what very big eyes you've got. The better to see you with, my dear. And Grandmother, what great big sharp teeth you've got. Oh, the better to eat you up with, my dear. Um. Ooh, just wait. Aha, Wolf, I got you. The hunter looks so strong. You're a hunter? Then where's your gun? Why do I need a gun? You're so tiny I could use a fly swatter. <laughs> but I'd rather do it like this. Like what? With my bare hands. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> your favorite. Mine was the grandmother. Well, I think Red Riding Hood was the best. For me, the hunter. He was so mighty and so fearless. And for me, the special effects. <laughs> but if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fixie, please don't let their secret out.